Hey everybody, I'm Ted from Tabex. In this tutorial, we are looking at payments. We will first create a manual payment. This is nice if you're testing something or if you want to manually assign a package to a player. We will filter through our payments to find the correct payment we are looking for. We will then take a look at what kind of information and options we have when looking at a specific payment. And then lastly, we'll go over these three options here on the left, recurring payments, payment methods, and also our exports. So from our dashboard, we are going to payments. As you can see, I already have several payments. Your list might be empty. Let's first of all start by creating a manual payment in the top right. We can then fill in our username. Optionally, we can add our email address. If you want to, you can change the price and you can also leave a note. For example, if it's not a test payment, why you assign this manually to this customer. We then have to select a package for this test payment. So I'm going to select booster and then small booster, just as an example. Let it generate. We can then select how many we want to send. In my case, one is fine. And then we can click on create to create this manual payment. So now let's click on view on the right. In the top left, we have our details. So we have the transaction ID, what kind of payment it is, and then also who bought it. A payment is always attached to a customer. We can see the payment history for that customer. We can also directly look at those payments. In the top right, we can see what the customer has purchased. We can get more details of the settings of the package and also go directly to the package by clicking on the name. If used, we will also get information about coupons, gift cards, and discounts. Since I didn't use those in this payment, this is empty. And again, we can leave a note either for ourselves or for someone in our team. At the bottom, we can see the commands attached to this package. We can see the status is still due. When clicking on edit, we can get more information. This is set to run only if the player is online. I have not connected to the server. This status will remain due. It will wait for the correct username to connect to the proper server and only then it will execute the command. Let's take a look at a different payment. You can see this is a different type of payment. This is a test payment. This payment is done by going to settings and then under checkout, we can enable test mode. And here in the end, instead of having to actually going through the payment, you can authorize or complete the payment. Of course, once your server goes live, remove this test mode. Under here, we also have an option saying remove payments created using the test payment method. If you have a lot of test payments and you want to remove them from your payments list, you can find that feature over here. Back to our payment, you can see there are a few different options. We get more information, more buttons, and also when scrolling down, you can see we now have actually processed commands. And as you might have spotted, they are not called commands here, they are called Discord actions. What I'm trying to say is the options you get and how things are labeled might vary slightly between Tabex store types, but the main concept will remain the same. It just depends on what kind of store type you're using and what kind of payment you're viewing. Since this is a test payment and not a manual payment, we can click on breakdown. This will give us a breakdown of the actual package if this was a real purchase. Some of these things like gateway fee, we will look at again when going over the payment methods. If you have a lot of payments like I do here on our demo store, it might be difficult to find the exact payment you're looking for. Bottom left, we have a filter option. We can then select what we want to filter on. So let's say amount and let's do 14.99. Here you can see we still get quite a few options. We can add another filter. Let's select a random date in March. And then if we search, we only have six results left. Let's say we found the payments that we are looking for. We might want to export this. Clicking on export in the top right. As it says, this will export all the payments using the filters on the previous page. So this is exactly what we want. Let's click on export. This is a extra security feature. As it says, we can find this in our email. After pasting the code here, let's click on unlock. As you can see, it automatically sends us to export in the bottom left. It will take a little bit and then it will be available for download. In case you missed it, top right, there was a clear filters button. Obviously, clicking this will clear the filters you set on the left. Lastly, bottom left, we have AND and OR. This dictates that they both have to be true or if one of them is enough for them to show up in these results. On the left, we have our reoccurring payments. Slightly different information than the one-off payments. We can see the next billing amount, the next billing date, the current status. These are all test payments, so they are either expired or canceled, depending on what we were trying to demonstrate. Clicking on view, we get the same details from the payment. And on the right, we have the payment history. And then clicking on view, we get the same information with the details, payment history, and the commands. 
Scrolling to the bottom, we can see that this payment has some processed Discord actions. In our earlier example, this would be commands in a game. Since these have been processed already, we also have a resend option. So let's click on resend and it will ask us if we are sure. Yes, we are sure. These three actions are now due. You can still see our processed actions down here. I don't actually want these to run. So as a demonstration, I can also delete all pending commands or pending actions in this case. And it looks like I was too slow. So let's see if we can do this again. Let's resend. Yes, we are sure. If we don't keep talking and just immediately go delete all, confirm, you can see that they are now gone and they haven't been processed. On the left, we also have our payment options. This will show us the logo, the method, what countries it support. This can either be a specific country, multiple countries or global, what kind of currencies they support, the fees associated with each payment method, the settlement time, if they support subscriptions or not. You could also disable or enable individual payment methods. We are constantly working on adding more so you can make sure that wherever your customers are, there is a payment option that suits their needs. Once everything is settled, this will just funnel into your wallet. It doesn't matter what payment method the customer used. Top right, we have a button with fees. Clicking there will send us to our documentation where you can find more information Going to exports, we can see we now have our export available for download. And this will be that CSV file that we selected earlier. Hopefully this was helpful. If anything is unclear, feel free to leave a comment down below. And as always, thank you for watching and good luck with your Tabex store.